I got called out. Is that what you think? You think? In today's episode, I am going to cover why I got called a liar on the internet. Liar! Liar! The realities of sharing ideas on a large social media account and what I really do myself versus a team. And to cap it all off, five daily habits that will change your life. The post that started this whole thing. But before we get too deep into the video, it would mean a lot to me if you would hit the like button below, especially if you like the content. And if you don't like the content, then just don't hit the like button and you're free to stop watching now. But first, what actually happened? On February 12th, I posted this Sunday work-in lesson in the Persist training app for our subscribers. These are days when there's no program workouts, but when clients rest on Sunday, the hope is that we can share some valuable insights or lessons with them to provoke thought or get them to take action in their lives outside the gym. The title of the work-in lesson was Five Daily Habits to Change Your Life. It listed out five things that I feel are really instrumental to changing your health and wellness every single day. Now, three days later, we posted the same text from that work-in lesson to our FBB Instagram account, and it was as a caption on a post. It just so happens that somewhere between February 12th and February 15th, when we posted it again on our social media account, Andrew Huberman tweeted a list of five things that were almost identical to the list that we shared. Upon seeing these two posts on social media, a popular CrossFit YouTube creator started to question if I had copied Andrew Huberman's post. Moreover, there was speculation that my team at Functional Bodybuilding was taking other people's words and passing them off as my own on social media. It all led to a call out, and the claim was, I was a liar and just copying Andrew Huberman. What are the odds that two fitness-minded people in the space have the exact same thoughts about a day removed from one another? I don't know, maybe the planets and stars and the sun and the moon aligned and it just like projects this image into all of these super fitness people's minds. Now this thumbnail that they used was very catchy and I sure as heck would have clicked on it if I saw it. I mean, Huberman is the man. He's been making a profound impact for good reason. He is wildly accomplished as an academic at Stanford University and is an authority on many things health and wellness related. His face next to a shredded photo of me and the words liar liar grab attention for sure. But then you click on the video and it was a bit of a letdown. It was 12 minutes of talking about unrelated topics in CrossFit first, then it closed with a three minute discussion of a very loose connection between our two social media posts. But here's the truth. While the timing was coincidental, a lot of us fitness influencers are saying the exact same thing. And the reason is because it all works. And because people need to hear things in different ways or from different people for it to finally sink in. If I've learned anything from 10 plus years of coaching clients, it is that I could say the same thing 20 times, but when they hear it for the 21st time, it clicks. It is better in the end that they finally took action regardless of the source that they took action from in the first place. After years of learning lessons from many different influential people and from hard won experience, I simply want to share those lessons with others through the channels that I have the ability to do so. Now, what about the realities of sharing these ideas on several platforms? Some of them with very large followings. I can hear the call outs now. People talking about fitness influencers saying things like, he probably doesn't even answer his own DMs. He doesn't even respond to comments like I do. He probably has some random person on his staff writing you back and responding to these posts. Am I answering all of my own DMs? Am I posting every bit of content myself? The question behind the question has to do with trust. My goal is to help as many people as possible by providing both free and paid content that will positively impact your health and fitness. I spend three hours or more each day on social media, making content, answering DMs, and more, sometimes closer to six hours. I also spend many more hours filming and producing content in the gym and at home. And I love it. It's part of my job. But is that my entire job? No. I've also got team meetings and education. I've got writing our email newsletter and other content weekly. I've gotta be programming. I've gotta be doing feedback reviews on the programming. And of course, there's my own training that has to take place so that I can continue to learn and walk the talk. 
I don't take for granted that I've had the opportunity to reach more people than most, but I do have to be strategic about how to do that in the ways that will make the most impact. So no, I don't personally answer every program support question, every comment, or every interaction online. Because if I tried to, I'd leave a lot of you hanging. In order to help the most people, I have a team that is trained and knowledgeable and represents functional bodybuilding to get content and answers in more people's hands. But I value the relationships that I've built with you all, and I do answer what I can myself, including 100% of the DMs that come to my Instagram, at Marcus Philly account. And here's the deal with clickbait titles and shirtless photos. At the end of the day, I do think it's okay to use tactics to get people's attention. We do it too. We think about our thumbnails and make choices that we believe can increase our view times. All in service of a mission to share valuable information with you all. I mean, a photo of me looking extra ripped is going to perform better on YouTube than a video of me with a shirt on in bad lighting. But clicks are not the goal. The goal is to add value. I'm always going to lead with the question, are we adding value? Did this piece of educational content deliver that to our viewer? So on that note, I'd like to dive into the five daily habits to change your life that started this whole controversy. I wanna share with you how I first came to learn these principles and apply them to my life and why I'm sharing them with you today. Daily habit number one, wake up and go to bed at the same time every single day. I first heard about this from an early coach and mentor of mine in my CrossFit journey. James Fitzgerald shared this with me and it was principally about creating rhythm in my life. When I heard this for the first time, I remembered back to when I was in my early 20s and I was traveling through Southeast Asia near the equator. The sun came up, went down at the same time just about all year. I spent months going to bed and waking up with the sun, same time every day. During that time, I recall feeling the best I'd ever felt in my life. Now, why is this good? Well, rhythm is good for us as creatures. Our bodies get used to setting our internal clock. You've likely heard of circadian rhythms. Well, this ends up dictating your energy and your wakefulness the rest of the day. So a predictable bedtime and wake time means consistent and predictable energy in your life. Then you can leverage that however you want to do the things that you desire in your life. Habit number two, learn how to cook your own food and try to do this most of the time. This was actually a message that I remember Anthony Bourdain talking about when I first read his book, Kitchen Confidential. He basically said it should be required education to learn how to cook breakfast for yourself before you leave school and move away from your house. When I started to take this to heart and learn how to make my own food that tastes good and use different techniques and combine that with my knowledge for proper nutrition, I found a lot of incredibly easy and sustainable ways to make healthy food taste very good and be more sustainable. In college, I dieted and made dreadful food that was not appetizing. It still got me shredded, but the thought of doing that for the rest of my life seemed undoable. Look, the goal doesn't need to be getting shredded, but learning how to cook for yourself will save you loads of money, allow you to control the quantity and quality of your food much better, and if you can cook easy, efficient, and tasty food, you will be sure on your way to the body that looks, feels, and performs like you want it to. Principle number three, get 10 to 20 minutes of early morning and evening sun every day. Overcast, rain, sunshine, it doesn't matter. Just get outside to start and end your day. This one probably came into my life practice most recently. Historically, I always felt best in the summer months. I used to get seasonal affective disorder in the winter. If I had a tan, I was always more confident. Sun was such a positive thing for me. But I started to connect the value of sun exposure past just getting a tan. I started hearing health professionals or influencers talk about sun in the eyes being valuable for energy, hormones, circadian rhythms. It was about getting sunlight into the eyes, not just on the skin. A few years ago, I actually remember Laird Hamilton talking about sun gazing in the morning and the evening. Then I heard Raw of the Earth talk about it too. They cautioned against the use of sunglasses. But what really got me to pay attention and start implementing the morning and evening sun? Good morning, primals. That's right. Get sun on the eyes, on the face, on the skin. Liver King. He was truly getting sun every single morning and evening, regardless of how cold, rainy, or shitty it was outside. Once I heard it from him, the message penetrated through all the noise in my life 
And it was amazing how many other places I started to hear the same message from. In fact, Andrew Huberman was talking about it constantly once I had heard it loud and clear from Liver King. So this one gets a nod to Liver King, but the message came from many other places too. Principle number four, when it comes to temperature, move towards discomfort from time to time. Don't sit in climate controlled rooms all day, every day. Get hot and cold, ice bath, cold plunge, sauna, whatever you can and whatever you have access to. This lesson for sure goes back to my XPT experience with Laird and Gabby Hamilton. I spent four days at a private retreat at their home in Malibu. We did ice bath, sauna every single day. I left that four day experience and built a cold plunge and got a sauna right away in my backyard. I then did this every single day for almost two years without fail. Now, of course, Wim Hof was already on the scene talking about cold exposure benefits on his Joe Rogan podcast, and that was going viral. But I still hadn't implemented it myself. It wasn't until I had an in-person experience with Laird and Gabby Hamilton that I actually put this into practice for myself. I mean, saunas have been being talked about at length for their benefits on podcasts like Ben Greenfield all the time. But my highly influential experience was with Laird and Gabby. They inspired me. And the fifth principle, move your body with purpose for 30 minutes every single day. There are zero rest days from moving. On top of that, train your body for strength and power a few days per week. Well, I've been doing this pretty much my whole life. There have been a few short periods of time when I wasn't able to move as much as I would have liked to due to injury or life circumstances. Those were always some of the hardest periods of my life. After spending years as a competitive athlete, I had gotten into the habit of thinking that my movement was training. Training has intense days, moderate days, and rest days. We need breaks from training. But when the competitions are over, we still need to move. You can't take rest days from movement in life. This is when I started to think about the value of moving every single day. As a fitness coach, I wanted to share the message of training to make progress for your goals, but move every single day just like you wake up, just like you brush your teeth, shower, and eat food. Movement is a daily necessity. So go ahead and train two, three, five days a week. Take your rest days from training, but even on those rest days, go for a 30 minute walk, do something purposeful, get moving. Now here are two bonus honorable mentions that didn't make the top five list, but I think are really important to your health, happiness, and well-being. Bonus number one, spend time working in and on your relationships. Bonus number two, spend time in nature and getting disconnected from your technology. Now those were my top five these days. Will they change in the future? Possibly. Maybe I'll move one of these honorable mentions up the list. Now let me know in the comments what is on your top five list. And if there's something that you disagree with on my list and something that you might add from your list. And until I see you on the next video, keep spreading love on the social medias.